Bernardo! William. Hola, bon dia! Hello. Now, Bernardo, of course, is our Portugal correspondent, and you recently went to the RTP Eurovision 2018 press conference in Lisbon at RTP headquarters. Can we talk about it? Let's do this! Now, Bernardo, just tell us, what was the atmosphere like? Everyone was pretty confident. Everyone was really confident that they will create an, an amazing concept and will bring the contest to Lisbon for the first time in 49 years. And everyone is really excited and ready to put their hands in work and, and start developing everything that's needed for Eurovision. Well, yeah. you say start, but you guys are really ahead of the schedule. <laughs> yes! I mean, last year we were still talking about Dnipro, Lvov, <laughs> Odessa, Kiev, and then they didn't make a decision until many months later, I believe. Which, which doesn't mean that RTP didn't consider other cities, because there, there were four more cities, I guess, that they, they visited. Do you believe that? They, they really visited. No, I know they visited, but do you think they really thought it'd be somewhere besides Lisbon? No. <laughs> I mean, let's be very real. Because <laughs> Lisbon looks amazing. Yes, it does. In Portugal, there is no other city with the infrastructure as Lisbon can provide for a contest. Not, not only the arena, the entire city. Oh, sole mio! Mayo. Oh, you say mayo? Mayo. Oh my Arena. god, I've been saying mayo this whole time. In any event, let's talk about Mio Arena. Enormous, looks like a giant UFO landed in Portugal in the beautiful park of the nation. Yes. Stunning, redesigned for the 98 Expo, urban regeneration, 600 places for boats, a mall with 133 stores, 170 stores. Yes. 33 of which are restaurants. And it's where traditional Lisbon meets new Lisbon, mm -hmm. the new part of Lisbon, but still very into the vibe of the city, because of course the city is very old and very traditional, but even the more contemporary part, which is the Park of Nations area. How do you say it in Portuguese? Park das Nações. Oh my lord. <laughs> you have to learn this before you come to Lisbon. Park das Nações. Park das Nações. Oh my lord, keep going. <laughs> um, and yeah, basically it's, it, it, it's the best the best spot to, to do Eurovision. There's no other place mm. in the country uh, with available infrastructures for Eurovision because it's not only the arena. We're talking yeah. about a lot of infrastructures. Now I've got to ask you, behind the speakers there was this blue wavy kind of design and also on the billboards we've seen on the streets of Lisbon which you photographed, there's again blue water. Is this the final design? No. That is the question. That question is being brought up by so many people. It's not the final, the final logo. RTP uh, or RTP officials told me that they are still working on okay. the official, the official logo and the official theme for Eurovision. Of course, from uh, what Eurovision and RTP uh, presented this week, we know that is going to be related with C. Uh. And the tradition of, of Lisbon. This it's going to be very traditional. It makes a lot of sense, Portugal, a seafaring nation. Ferdinand Magellan, how do you say it? Ferdinand Magellan. You know him, <laughs> circumnavigated the world, the first yeah. person to do that. Vasco da Gama, Horn of Africa, hunty. And India. Yeah, he went all the way over there. You went to Brazil. Yes, we did. And so, we conquered it. Yeah. <laughs> and it was our colony for several years, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, so you're a seafaring people, the Tagus River in Lisbon. Yes, amazing. It's one minute from the, the arena. You have the longest bridge in Europe. Second. Well, Second longest bridge in Europe. It was the longest bridge in Europe until the bridge that connects Malmo to Copenhagen was built. <laughs> another Eurovision connection. Yes, another Eurovision connection. So yeah. the water theme is making sense. Now, forgive me, I interrupted you. You talked about Commerce Square. Let's show the picture. It looks beautiful, historic, harking back to Portuguese colonial greatness. <laughs> now tell us, what is this going to do at Eurovision? Well, the Lisbon Council made the, the Commerce Square available for RTP for 10 days. So the entire duration of the Eurovision festivities on, on the city. And most, most people say that it will host your village uh, and probably the red carpet event. Um, some, some say it may be also for your club, but Oh. Let's hold it because you you have the park park of nations area and the commerce square yeah. and those are going to be the two main um, beating hearts of the city during the two Eurovision weeks. Yeah? How far is commerce square from the park of nations and the Mayo Arena? <laughs> it really depends if you're talking about going via metro, mm. which is 
25 minutes of another okay. one, which is not that far because it's another line, but it's really clo really close. Lisbon is not a, a big city, mm. um, so everything is quite connected to... Oh my god. And, part of, and the, the, the area of Park of Nations has amazing infrastructures for metro, for trains, for buses, so you won't have any problems getting there, and the airport is five minutes from the arena. <laughs> Done! Done! I'm gonna do the Susie <laughs> shake on the metro all the way, honey! Now, Bernardo, this all cost money, and we know that Kiev, Ukraine, they had a lot of budgetary issues. Will there be any financial issues in Portugal? I really don't think so, because the city is really backing up um, the fact that RTP wants to host Eurovision in Lisbon, and the the mayor of Lisbon and the council of Lisbon and Visit Lisbon and the tourism board of Lisbon and Portugal uh, are really behind it and they are going to be the ones paying for almost everything. Uh, in the press conference they announced that the tourism board is going to, the, the Lisbon tourism board is the one going to pay for the venue, ah. which is the most expensive, probably the most expensive thing um, apart from producing the, the, the three shows and that's going to be responsibility of RTP. Uh, but every event that happens in Lisbon, on the Commerce Square and on Park of Nations, is going to be um, funded by the Lisbon Council. And okay, forgive me if I'm wrong, but I think there's like a tax on tourism, so if you stay in a hotel, that kind of tax money from the tourism is going to be used to pay for your vision? Or exactly, you yeah. The, tax, uh, the, the, the mayor of Lisbon told us in the press conference that they are going to use that taxation Fantastic. on tourism, it's not only on hotels but also in restaurants, everywhere really. Mm -hmm. And they're going to use the money they have and they're going to um, invest in Eurovision. Ah, uh, you know, it's so funny because I remember in 2011, Omens da Luta, or was it 2010? 2011, yeah. 2011, La Luta e Algria, the struggle <laughs> is the joy. They were protesting austerity, but the dark times are gone. <laughs> Portugal <laughs> got the money I need to throw Eurovision. It's so exciting. Yes, and the EBU is really excited as well. Of course, last year they had a bit of an issue with, with Ukraine. Non-stop drama. Uh, Non-stop drama, yes. Three months and behind. After that, everything is... Well, everything would be perfect. Yeah, it's not even but obvious. Even Santa Maria the Fera would be perfect <laughs> after, after, after the disaster that happened in Kiev prior to the actual contest. So uh, they'd be using that Lisbon is really investing their time and effort and their ideas uh, and their know-how mm. um, how to create events of such big dimensions. We hosted the, the Champions League in football. Uh, we, host, we hosted last year the, um, the Web Summit in Mel Arena. We also organized it last year and we're going to organize it in Mel Arena as well this year prior to Eurovision. Uh, so we have a lot of know-how on how to create how to do it big. Host, how to do it big. And without uh, spending too much money. You remember how Zlatan Abramovic was in the opening of the Malmo Grand Final? Are you waiting for Cristiano Ronaldo? I'm waiting for Ronaldo to be like, welcome to his... <laughs> I was going to say Rio. Welcome to Lisbon. <laughs> or maybe Katia Mero, if he's not available. Just kidding. <laughs> well, I am looking forward to partying in your home city. You'll I'm be there. Yeah, and you're traveling soon. Oh yeah, I'm going on holiday there next week. So we'll film some footage from outside. And you're actually on a trip this evening. Yes, I'm on my way to Baku, Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan. Yes, for the Zara Fest with Devon. We are going to cover the event over the next four days on our social media pages, on YouTube, and on Ruby Blogs. Can we just say, I saw the list. It was Sergey Lazarev, Annie Lorax, Cerebro, who else? Alexei Vorobyov. Alexei Vorobyov. Philip Kukorov. Yeah, man. The whole world is going to be there. So I was like, I've got to get some reporters there. <laughs> and it worked out. In any case, we will see you later. Bye!